Apple just held its first product launch event of the year, and it didn't disappoint. It announced a, a new colorful iMac, an updated iPad Pro with 5G and a thin M1 chip. Also came out with AirTags, which are lost device tracking gadgets, and a refreshed Apple TV with a brand new remote. Here to break it down for us is Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research. So Dan, um, you watched that Apple event. Was there anything there in particular that, that got you really excited? I think all of us went into the event uh, really excited and anticipating the iPad launch. That was kind of what everybody knew about. And of course, we're excited to see the continued expansion of the ecosystem to the M1. And that was exactly what was delivered. So was it surprising? Not entirely. Does the new offer look really good and compelling? Yes, it does. And it's really interesting because, you know, we saw Apple focus on a whole bunch of other stuff, though, that captured my attention, too. Um, and you can just see the diversification. They, they touched on ESG and sustainability straight away by talking about the company's plans for uh, carbon neutrality early on. And then you saw they dove in and expanding the credit card offering and making it more valuable for families and the application and the tools to expand its usability and democratize credit. And then these new tiles um, that they're coming out with, and I'm using the term tile because it's Apple's version, the AirTag, is going to probably disrupt that space in a lot of great ways. So, you know, they hit a lot of different angles. And of course, it was all encapsulated at the end by this really exciting new iPad and these colorful iMacs, which really had a 90s feel to me. It really brought me back to those big, colorful cubes that uh, came out in the 90s and the early days of the iMac. Now, typically, we like to watch, and I think a lot of the anticipation usually comes around Apple's fall event, but of course, the pandemic canceled last year's spring event. How much do you think that the pandemic has really contributed to a lot of the hype or excitement uh, around Apple's event this year and some of the products that we're going to be getting? Yeah, I think after the year that all of us have dealt with, I think everyone's excited and just a little bit inspired for new products, new technologies. We had the stimulus come into play, and I think some people are probably going to be spending their stimulus check to go out and get one of these new iPads or a purple iPhone. Um, and I think people are anticipating always these new products, these new offerings from Apple. I think the big thing, like I said, from the overall for the investor community to really glom onto though is this M1 evolution though. So we heard about it when the company came out with the M1 Max and you're starting to see that now expand. Everyone kind of wondered what's gonna happen to the iMac. Well, we've got an answer now. It's thinner, it's, it's lighter, it looks very nice, it's colorful, but it's that continuation of that M1 ecosystem. We're seeing the same thing now going into the iPad. This is really gonna be about continuity. It's gonna be about creating consistency across the experience. And, and Apple is really leaning into this M1. It gives them more scalability. And of course we've talked a ton and I've been on here earlier to talk about the chip shortage. Well, creating and streamlining the, uh, you know, the delivery and building this profile around this ARM-based variant, Apple's got a great relationship with TSM for their five nanometer process. And this is just gonna continue to expand the amount of demand and the amount of fulfillment that's going to run through Apple from TSM. So it was a very diverse launch, covered a lot of ground, but I think for the people looking on and saying what's next for Apple, I think this M1 ecosystem, they're fully leaned in and this is where everything is going for the company. It will be this M1 and these next generation of ARM-based chips it's building. And then before we let you go, what was your take on the Apple podcast announcement that now they're going to come out with this uh, subscription model? You know, we were talking earlier with our tech editor, Dan Howley, about how they're called podcasts because, you know, they came from from Apple and the iPod, um, but they never really monetized podcasts. They sort of saw Spotify and others do that. What do you think about this latest push? And is it going to be successful as they they try to play catch up in that area? Yeah, that's a great point, Alexis. They are certainly playing catch up, but we've seen with TV, uh, with gaming, Apple has a service services route that it is committed to. 
Will it be a huge win straight away? I think it'll take time to develop the ecosystem around the podcast. But I also do believe that Apple knows you're seeing, you know, some decline in the volume of iPhone purchases. Uh, you're seeing, you know, uh, a more competitive space around laptops that Apple has never really had a large share around, but has always been highly profitable. But what Apple has really leaned into are these expansive and extensible service offerings, TV, movies, gaming, news. Podcast was a logical progression. I expect the company will get behind it. They'll make it highly available to the ecosystem and the adoption will come. But the, com the competition will certainly be there. All these services, Apple has been a fast follower. And so far, it looks so good. But like I said, I expect competition to be you know, strong in the coming quarters. You can bet on that. Dan Newman of Futurum Research, thanks so much.